all. Be it known that today, 5th of March, is St. Piran's Day. The patron saint of Cornish tin miners and of Cornwall. The day when Cornwall celebrates its identity, its heritage, its traditions, its customs, its history, its religion, and its language. In maintaining our unique Cornish identity, may we start the proceedings with a member of cathedral staff to say a prayer. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Lovely to have you here. A big welcome from the cathedral to young and old alike on this fantastic celebration of St. Piran's Day. And I hope you afterwards, if you have time, can just look around a bit of the cathedral and remind yourself of some of the Christian heritage that St. Piran brought with him to Cornwall. As we stand, just a short prayer to give thanks for him. Almighty God, by whose grace the blessed Abbot Piran kindled with, with the fire of your love, became a burning and shining light in the Cornish church. Inflame us with the same spirit of discipline and love that we may ever walk before you as children of light through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. May I now call upon Truro's first citizen, the right worshipful mayor of Truro, Councillor Rob Nolan, to start proceedings and welcome you all to this St. Piran's Day celebration. Mr. Mayor. Gul Perrin Nolan, happy St. Piran's Day. Delighted to welcome you all to Truro. Even Russian TV we've got here filming the events. I don't know quite what they're going to make of this on the 6 o'clock news in Moscow tonight. <laughs> Happy St. Piran's Day. That, that very phrase is trending on Twitter. I know you know what that means. That means that uh, all the conversations that are taking place in Twitter, the top 10 conversations worldwide, people are saying Happy St. Piran's Day. People in Australia and South Africa and wherever Cornish people have settled, even up country in Milton Keynes, there's Cornish maids wishing they were back home in Bodmin. As they settled down to their, uh, out, fetching out Granny's old pasty recipe and having a go at it. Hasn't this parade grown in size? Isn't it a magnificent thing now to see you all here? 20, 25 years ago, I remember people would ask, when they'd see the Cornish flag, people would ask, what was that then? Now I think, I think there can't be anyone that doesn't own some, a St. Piran's flag or some emblem of, of, of Cornwall. And it's a fabulous thing to see. No one can mistake the pride we all have in Cornwall. The growth of St. Piran's Day, the celebration, is a joy to see on that. The subject of Cornishness comes up, shift as uncomfortable. I don't have a Kerno sticker in my car, and I don't have a rugby shirt, and I, I don't feel entitled. I know many people who feel that way. I, I wonder if today, on this St. Piran's Day, we can ask you to send out a message that you don't want to stop being proud of where you came from, but you can be a, a naturalised Cornishman, a Cornishman from Yorkshire, or a Cornishman from Milton Keynes, or, 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 or indeed from Ireland, like, like me and St. Piran. So we can all work together and make ourselves stronger and be a bigger and stronger Cornwall. The identity of our place, the sense of our place, the feeling of our place. Magnificent thing to see and to be a part of it. I'm very proud to be Mayor of Truro and be here today. So, cool Perrin Lowen, Colonel Vispicken, onward celebrations. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There will now be a blessing given by the Bishop of Truro, the Right Reverend Tim Thornton. Your ass. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, Mr. Mayor, as a Cornish Bishop from Yorkshire, I couldn't agree more with your sentiments. Uh, and I hope that we can indeed be accepted and welcomed, as I've felt since I've been here, as associate members of this wonderful part of God's world. Let us pray. Ha benath du olagalasek, and tars and map has risans, rebo in tragoth, ha trigger genoth binetha. Amen. May God give you grace to follow his saints in faith and hope and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, 
the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all whom you love, this day and always. Amen. We have two schools today that will demonstrate the magic of the myths and legend of St Piran. Firstly, the school will perform a short play about the life of St Piran. So, Trigol School, will you please take centre stage? The seven Irish chieftains that were still alive were standing wearily talking. Some of them were still bleeding from the battle. Let's see what they have to say. outside and got out of bed. It was so early that it was still dark but Pyrrhon pulled his cloak around him and strode towards the sea. It was, he found a stone ledge out of the window in the rain and began his morning prayers. He liked to play when it was quiet but for everyone else to wake up but it wasn't quiet this morning. The waves crashed and the rocks below him and the storm howled around him whistling in his ears and stinging his face. It was so noisy that he did not hear the men creep up behind him. Piran realised there, no, there was no escape, so he did the only thing he could. He began to pray. And they threw him off a cliff into the sea below. They were astounded to see him still tied to the millstone, bobbing gently off into the distance. When Piran awoke, he opened his eyes to find out that the stone had washed ashore on a long sandy beach. He looked around at the beautiful place that God had sent him to. Birds flew above his head in the bluest sky he ever had seen. The sea sparkled in the distance, in the sunlight, and the sand stretched far into the distance. Piran praised God for a safe arrival and then made a shelter. <laughs> he spent 40 days and 40 nights drinking only water and eating almost nothing. He spent his time praying and explored the land by the sea. He picked sea kelp, mushrooms, berries and nuts and carried them to a settlement he had spotted in the distance. Piran greeted the people as they came out of their head to Piran greeted the people as they came out of their homes to see who had arrived. He presented them with the food he had gathered. Soon food was cooking over the fire and all the people crowded around to listen to Piran told them about his journey across the sea and the god that had saved him. After a great feast, Piran celebrated in his safe road with his new friends. They were singing and dancing when the sun had set. The fire was burning brightly now in his old hush day when suddenly... <coughs> this strange new metal was what we call tin, and in no time they were making all sorts of useful things with the tin that they had found. The Cornish tinning trusty grew and grew, bringing prosperity to the land. That people still celebrate St. Perrin today. There you are, folks. An introduction to St. Perrin had you not known previously. So, thank you, Trigol's School. Year two pupils of Truro Pre Preparatory School who will now perform a Cornish dance.
Oxford Preparatory High School students will now give us their story of St. Piran as a piece of choral speaking. Choral speaking by Truro Preparatory High School students.
Potrero and Falmouth, Sarah Newton, to present the winner of the poster competition with a certificate. Sarah. This award to Oliver Beaumont, and I'm sure you've all enjoyed as much as I have seeing these fantastic posters all around Truro. So Oliver, come and get your prize. Well done. Cousin Jacks of Richard Lander School, who will now lead us all, eventually, singing Trelawney. a huge moraz thank you to everybody who's come along today to take part especially the schools who've put on fantastic performances created superb costumes with those flags and so on moraz to everybody thank you for coming see you again next year if not before <laughs> very best to you all <laughs>